ready to get your hands dirty. Always up for a little garden adventure. This deep dive, we're tackling those collard greens you've been wanting to grow from seed. And let me tell you, your source material. This video from Gabarai's Garden and Candles, Georgia Collard Seed Fall Germination in Zone 7. Oh, Gabarai knows their stuff. Seriously impressive. And since you're in Zone 7 yourself, well, let's just say this deep dive is tailor-made. Lit it when that happens. Right. Okay, so right off the bat, Gabarai talks about the hot water treatment for peat pellets. I'll admit, I kind of glossed over that part the first time I watched. Yeah. Like, how hot could it really need to be? Hotter than you might think. It's not about making tea for your seedlings, that's for sure. So what's the deal? Why so much heat? Sanitation, my friend. We're talking about creating a sterile environment for those seeds to germinate. Those peat pellets. They can harbor fungi and other unwanted guests. Hot water is like a reset button. Huh. Never thought about it like that. Mm -hmm. I've got to up my seed starting hygiene game. Always a good idea, trust me. And speaking of things I never really considered, collard seeds. Those are some seriously tiny seeds. Tell me about it. Gabariah plants two per cell in the seed starting kit. Smart move, right? Oh, absolutely. Insurance. Not all seeds are created equal. Plus, you can always thin them out later. Let the strongest seedling win. A little plant competition, huh? <laughs> Love it. Okay, so we've got our seeds nestled in their peat pellet homes. What's next on the agenda? Light show. Grow lights. Yep. Gabariah gives those babies a good couple of weeks under the artificial sun. It's all about strong root development, right? Exactly. And preventing those seedlings from getting all leggy and reaching for the sun they're not getting enough of. Leggy seedlings. Mm. <laughs> Been there, done that. Not a good look. So how long do they stay under the grow lights? Gabariah aims for a couple of weeks, but it can depend on your setup and how quickly those little guys sprout. The goal is to give them a good head start before they have to face the real world. By real world, you mean? The great outdoors. But it's not as simple as just plopping them in the ground and hoping for the best. We've got to talk about hardening off. Hardening off, okay. What's the deal with that? Think of it this way. You've got these seedling rookies, right? They've been living in a climate-controlled penthouse with those grow lights. Pampered little seedlings. Exactly. Then suddenly, Bam! Direct sunlight, wind chill, maybe even a surprise downpour. They'll be toast if you don't prepare them. So hardening off is, what, seedling boot camp? Something like that. The goal is to gradually introduce them to the elements. Gabariya starts with a couple of hours in a shady spot. Then, over a week or two, you increase their exposure. Bit by bit, they get used to the real deal. Building up their tolerance. Like a tan, but for plants. Exactly. And just as important as sunlight air circulation. Those seedlings need to get used to a little breeze helps them grow strong stems. That's one thing I've learned the hard way. Nothing worse than flimsy stems that can't support the weight of, well, all those delicious collard leaves. Right. And speaking of hard-won wisdom, let's talk about water. Gabariah mentions using filtered water for their seedlings, even a bit of cooled down boiling water for the peat pellets. Yeah, I noticed that. Is city water really that bad for seedlings? It can be, especially if it's heavily chlorinated. Chlorine's great for killing harmful bacteria, but it can also wipe out beneficial microbes in the soil. Oh, right. It's like, we need those good bacteria for our gut health, and plants need them too. Precisely. It's all about that healthy microbiome, whether you're a collard green or a collard green enthusiast. Man, there's so much to consider when you really start digging into it, huh? Always more to learn. But that's half the fun, wouldn't you say? You know, I've got to admit, diving deep into this whole collard green journey, I'm feeling way more prepared than I thought I would. That's the power of a good deep dive. And let's be real, Gabariah's video, total game changer. Seriously, between the hot water treatment for the peat pellets, the whole hardening off process, who knew there was so much to it? It's all about giving those seedlings the best possible start, right? Right. But here's the thing. It doesn't feel overwhelming anymore. It feels doable. Like, mm -hmm. I can totally handle this. You absolutely can. And once you see those first little sprouts emerge... Oh, man. So rewarding. The best feeling. It's like all that effort. Totally worth it. So before we wrap things up here, let's recap for our listeners who are ready to take on their own collard green adventures. Let's do it. We started with those teeny tiny seeds learned about giving them a VIP experience with peat pellets and grow lights. Don't forget the hardening off. Can't just toss them out into the elements unprepared. Right. Got to toughen them up a bit first. Uh. But beyond the steps themselves, I think what really clicked for me was understanding the why. Absolutely. Like with the filtered water. It makes sense when you think about those beneficial microbes in the soil. Yeah. 
It's I, all connected. It really is. And you know what else is connected? What's that? The feeling of satisfaction you get when you finally sit down to a meal made with those homegrown collards. Okay, now that's a feeling I can get behind. There's just something special about knowing you nurtured those plants from tiny seeds to a delicious plate. Talk about full circle. Well, folks, there you have it. Another deep dive in the books. Huge thanks to Gabariah's Garden and Candles for the inspiration. Be sure to check out the full video on their YouTube channel. And to all our listeners, happy gardening. We'll catch you on the next deep dive.